Good morning, church. It's nice to see you again. Well, not l literally, not in person, but you guys all know what I mean. Anyways, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Brett Thumb, and I'm the youth director here at Concord. And on behalf of all of the staff here, we would just want to say welcome. We're very glad that you were able to join us and worship with us on Easter Sunday. Now, before we begin, I actually don't have any announcements for you guys. If any new announcements do come up or anything that we have to pass on, we will try our best to do so. But as of right now, there's nothing. Just stay at home, stay safe, and stay healthy. We love and care about you guys all very, very much. But if you guys will bow your heads with me and join me with a time of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. Um, God, and we just thank you for, for sending your son for us. And Lord, we, we thank you that he was able to rise for us as well. Now, God, I pray that today while we are celebrating the fact that Jesus is risen, God, I pray that this isn't any different day for us, God, that we can take this celebration, God, and we act like this every day, not just today, Lord, because every day that Jesus has been risen is worth celebrating. And God, we just thank you for that, and we love you very, very much, God. In your name we pray. Amen. As I said, everyone, I hope you all stay safe. We really do care and love about each and every one of you. Um, but now if you guys will join us for a time of worship together. Morning, Concord Church. It is great to be here with you today. Although we can't be together physically, we can be together in spirit. Thanks be to God for that help. Today is a day we normally, when we gather, we would say, Christ is risen. And then there would be an echo saying, Christ is risen indeed. And so this morning, as we do our call to worship, I invite you, uh, when I give you the motion, to say it with me Christ is risen indeed. Out of the darkness of grief and despair comes a message of hope. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. We run to the tomb to see it for ourselves. And it is true. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. We hear a voice call our name and we know our risen Lord is now with us always. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together. God of all of our days, we come this morning with an eager anticipation. We seek to know you, to see you, to touch you. Open our hearts that we might experience you anew. Open our lives that we may be faithful witnesses to your resurrection. May we with shouts of joy proclaim your steadfast liberating love to people everywhere always and forever. Jesus, it is in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's continue with our worship this morning. Oh 
so I invite you to say the affirmation of faith along with me as it's written on your screen. Yes, it can happen. Yes, it can take place. Yes, God can do it. After all, the angel said, do not be afraid. After all, the tomb was found empty. After all, the spirit will pray for you. After all, God wants peace and reconciliation. After all, God's name is justice. After all, God is liberation. Yes, it can happen. Yes, it can take place. Yes, God can do it. Amen. Thanks be to God. Let's continue with prayer. Gracious God, we are thankful this morning that we have this opportunity to come together to you in our prayers. Lord, today is Easter. Today is that day uh, where death was defeated, where you rule over the grave. Today is a day that gives us hope. Today is a day that we as Christ followers orient ourselves with, that we serve a God who defeated death, a God who, who loves us, who would die for us, and who would rise again for us. That same God who has a place prepared for us. Jesus, thank you for loving us so much. Thank you for including us and inviting us to be a part of this life of yours. Jesus, we come together uh, this morning in prayer, separated physically, but Jesus, we are united in spirit. And we call on your name, dear God, to, to halt this coronavirus. Lord, we pray your blessing upon the scientists that are researching a cure. We pray for doctors and nurses. We pray for those who are continuing to work. Lord, we pray for those who are out of work. Lord, we pray for those who are uh, suffering from corona and COVID, who are suffering from social isolation. Lord, we, we pray for our world. We pray, dear God, for, uh, for you again to show up in a mighty way. Jesus, now more than ever, we are reminded of just how desperately we need you. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Come, Lord Jesus, come. As we continue with our prayer this morning, Lord God, we pray that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Good morning, Pastor John Phipps from Concord, and we welcome you on this Easter sunrise morning. It's, uh, some of you joined us maybe for a drive-in church for sunrise and now uh, for our, our worship services. And, and all of us are still in a process of adjusting to a new normal. It's kind of hard for us, especially as a pastor, to not be gathering with you on Easter morning with, with the churches full of families and, and uh, the lilies and, and all the different uh, decorations as we celebrate our risen Lord. And uh, we're used to uh, what's normal. And this is definitely not normal. And the old patterns, the old expectations, uh, those don't fit with the current situation. And that was true for that very first Easter morning as well. When uh, the, the women arrived at the tomb, they did not find what they expected. It wasn't the normal for what they were, were anticipating. So would you listen to the Word of God found in Matthew chapter 28. This is verses 1 through 12. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow, and for fear of him the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. 
He is not here, for he is risen, as he said, Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. And so they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they, took, they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. I'd also like to read to you from the Gospel of John. In, uh, pardon me one second, in chapter 20. And it says, Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They've taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going toward the tomb. Both of them were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there and the face cloth which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and she wept, and she stooped and looked into the tomb, and saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? And supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father, and your Father to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he has said these things to her. The word of God for the people of God. <clears throat> you bow with me for a brief moment of prayer. Lord, as we come to celebrate your rising as the sun rises behind us, Lord, may your spirit come and be upon us as we seek to worship you as the risen Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Much of the uncertainties that we have today in the midst of this uh, pandemic and uh, the, the, the way that in which we're not able to gather and worship together, much of that was true for the first Easter. The disciples, they were all in isolation and hiding for fear of the Jews. And the women who came to the tomb came with some expectations that everything would be as it normally is, where they would expect to find the, the stone across the tomb entrance and the body inside the tomb that they would prepare uh, for its final barrier, burial. But they came to face, face to face with a new normal, something that was totally different than they had ever expected. It was something that they'd never heard about well, or expected. They had heard of others being risen from the dead, but no one being risen just on their own from the dead. They knew of Lazarus and they knew uh, of of the, the little girl. But at this point they encountered something that was totally outside the realm of what they were used to and, and it was dis difficult for them to grasp. Even Peter and John who'd been with Jesus for three years, when they arrived at the tomb they did not grasp what had happened, that Jesus Christ was alive and risen from the dead, even though he had taught them that that would take place. The reality of the new world in which they now were living had not yet been comprehended by them. Think back about the background that Peter and John, even Mary, some of the women had in following Jesus over the past three years. Jesus had taught them, Behold, I make all things new. They never even comprehended that that meant death itself even was something new, a new, new approach to death. That revelation had never entered their minds at this point. Think about everything that they had seen during the past three years. They saw him uh, at bring a quadriplegic and raise him off his mat. 
They saw him cast out demons, some in which uh, people had been plagued with for years. They, they saw the lame that would, would walk, the blind that would see. They saw lepers feel the touch of his hand when no one had touched them for years. Storms at sea were calmed by just his voice. And he could walk in the midst of waves on top of the, on top of the water. Even the dead were raised by his hand, as we know of Lazarus. Thousands were fed where there was very little food at, at all, any available. But still they didn't understand when they came to the tomb. They'd seen him die a brutal death. And it's hard to grasp the power of the Holy Spirit at work when your mind is cluttered with fear, grief, anger, other emotions. All you know is what you expected to happen for him to be the Messiah at that point in time to deliver them politically from Rome did not happen. And I find it interesting how uh, Mary reacted to the angels that, that were present at the tomb. They, they had just been inside the tomb and, and as she, she looked back in, suddenly there's two angels standing uh, sitting there on, on the, the shelf where the body had laid, one at the head, one at the foot. Most any time in, in scriptures when someone encounters an angel, there's usually trembling and great fear. But her emotions had her so, so uh, torn that she didn't even recognize and think about them as angels at the time. She didn't even ask, why, how'd you get in here? Her response simply is when they speak to her, why are you weeping? She said, they've taken his body and I don't know where they've laid it. Mary's reaction is, is totally contrary to what most encounter, most have when they encounter an angel. No question that uh, her grief, her, her feelings had uh, changed how she perceived things. You know, when Jesus appears, it's interesting uh, that now that she doesn't even recognize him. She turns and, and she looks and she assumes him to be the gardener. And, and the Greek word there that says when she saw him and thought he was the gardener, the Greek word is that he would, that she perceived him and looked at him intently with, with a lot of, of interest and, and questioning, but yet did not understand that that was Jesus. And he speaks to her and he says, Woman, why are you weeping? And again she repeats out of her grief, They've taken his body and I don't know where they've laid him. But then, you know, he speaks her voice, or her name. He says, Mary. She recognizes him right away. Something happens when Jesus calls your name. In the midst of your grief, in the midst of your emotions, in the midst of your doubts, in the midst of your fears, when Jesus speaks your name, suddenly you learn to recognize him. Something happens in that process. Even with the two that on the story in Luke of the on the road to Emmaus, as they walk along and Jesus comes before them, he asks a question. What are you talking about? And the two of them say, Are you the only one in all this area that doesn't know what's taken place? How the one that was Jesus, who was mighty a mighty prophet in word and deed, we thought he was the Messiah, that he's been crucified, and now some say that he's risen and that his body's gone. They didn't recognize Jesus. They walked with him all day long as he taught them from the Old Testament. They didn't, they didn't understand him. Until that night when they sat down at, uh, to break bread and they heard him pray and speak between himself and his Heavenly Father. Prayers that they've heard him say many different times throughout the years. They sensed a definite intimacy between Jesus and, and his Heavenly Father and the blessing and the breaking of bread. And their hearts that had been warmed now suddenly realized who Jesus was. They knew that in that moment the only one that was that close to God could be, could be the Messiah and that he was alive. And they rushed back to tell the disciples. When you encounter Jesus and he either speaks to you by name or you uh, learn and discern the intimacy between him and the Heavenly Father, that he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, then the blindness of your heart and your mind is, is now revealed. You, you can, can now see freely, just like the, the, the blind were healed, your, your hearts are now restored. 
you now recognize that He is the risen Christ. And when He calls your name, you'll be aware of something new. When you sense the intimacy that He has with God as He stands before the Heavenly Father, you know there's something new. There's a new normal. Things aren't like they used to be. There's, there's something that now takes place in such a way that, that Christ is glorified and honored. You might be distracted in many ways because of grief, anger, worry, fears, maybe your work or your lack of work, maybe, maybe family issues and concerns. Any number of reasons you may overlook uh, Christ's presence right before you as a risen Lord. Calm yourself. Just long enough to listen. Sometimes we look so intently like Mary did, thinking he was the gardener, that, that we don't hear the voice that speaks to us. Take a moment to, to just be quiet and say, Lord, speak to me. Lord, call my name. Lord, bless the moment that we're in as, as you did with the two on the road to Emmaus. And then you'll know that he is alive. And you'll rush to tell someone, just as, as Mary rushed back to tell the disciples. They may not believe at first, but then he'll come and speak to them. Just as the two from Emmaus rushed back to Jerusalem, six, seven miles on foot, because they had a message to tell that Jesus Christ is alive. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Don't let yourself get so concerned with, with all the worries of the world that you miss Jesus alive this moment. As we continue to live out the midst of this pandemic and how our world changes and how, how what we've known to be normal and Easter that we normally would gather with family and be together, as that all changes and now we do so much online, Remember that Jesus came to make all things new. In the midst of every part of this, he still is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. He sits upon the throne as a risen Savior. And he shall return. So prepare your hearts and listen for his voice. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we ask that your spirit and your power would come upon us. Lord, that we might might hear your voice speak to us on this Easter morning, that we might hear you call each of us by name, and that we might grab for you, Lord, to hold on to you, because, Lord, we want to know you better. We want to experience you as a risen Lord. Father, may your spirit fall upon us. May you give us power and strength in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor John, for that message. It is, I know it's something that we needed to hear today. And my name is Chris Kendall. I'm one of the pastors here at Concord Church. And uh, if you're not a regular attender of Concord, I just want to make sure I, I take the time to say hello to you. Uh, thank you for being with us this morning in our time of worship. Uh, if you are new, I would love for you to send me an email at pastorchris at celebrateconcord.com. I would love to connect with you and, uh, and just get to know you, see how uh, you might be able to be a regular part of our church gathering. Now we're going to be moving into a, a time where we, we celebrate God by the giving and receiving of our tithes and offering. Now we do this a little bit differently because we are online. And so as you can, church, I invite you to mail your checks in to 285 Concord Church Road, or you can do it electronically, and all that information is on our website. Uh, again, this is not out of obligation. This isn't a way to get God to love us more. This is simply an expression of God, we believe in you. God, we trust in you. So let's pray together today. Gracious God, as the, as the sun comes down, we recognize your presence here. Lord, thank you for this opportunity we have uh, in these brief moments to be outside. Lord, thank you for the opportunities uh, to hear creation all around us. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to give back to you. Lord, we, we truly do trust you more than we trust in money. And so as we give our gifts to you, dear God, we pray that you would use our gifts 
that you would bless them, that you would multiply them. Lord, that they would make a difference in this world for your kingdom. Lord, be a bless, or bless the, the gifts and the givers. And it is in your son's name we pray, dear God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everybody. to the end of our service. Sometimes uh, we let our lives get into some kind of a rut or a funk where we know and believe that Jesus is risen from the dead. We profess that in our faith, but in many ways we act as if that's not the reality. We act as if everything is just like life for every other person who does not know Christ. We need a, a fresh experience of Christ calling our name, of encountering the risen Lord. We need, we need a, a moment where we reach and meet him and we, we reach out for him. A moment where we hear his prayers for us as in the blessing and breaking the bread in Emmaus. I thought back uh, over my many times in my life of special moments where, where I've had that experience where I know God was speaking to me by name different moments that, that are burned into my heart and my mind to, to always be something special between uh, God and myself. During those times, sometimes those, those things move me to great joy as I relive those memories. Other times I, I remember the tears and the sorrow I felt in the midst of that time. But each one of those moments are special to me and they, they reignite a fire within me because I know Christ is calling me by name. He's called me by name numerous times. I long and look forward to the times that he will do that again in a very special, intimate way. So as 
we wrap up our service here on Easter Sunday, I ask that as you spend time with your families, maybe share those moments together if they're not so intimate that you can't share. Maybe ask God to speak to you one more time, to call you by name, that you might reach out to Him and feel His presence. Now may you go in the peace and the knowledge and the love of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.